My name is Abu Salman. I was born in Al-Mayadeen, Syria, and came to Canada as a refugee from the war at the end of 2017. All my life I have painted. This is the story of my life and journey from Syria to Canada. Abud started working on the 12 paintings in February 2020 after he received a grant from the Edmonton Arts Council. The paintings show the most important highlights from each phase of his life and how he came to be in Canada after his life in Syria was changed due to the war. I was born in Al Mayadeen, a town in eastern Syria by the Euphrates River. In this first painting, I wanted to gather all the important elements that shaped my life from birth to early childhood. Al Mayadeen is famous for its castle, Al Rahba. Al Rahba is a reminder of a long cultural history of the area. I show this castle in the center of the painting. I have intertwined in its shape the names of my mother, father, and siblings written in Arabic. In the middle of the castle, I painted my father's portrait linked to the well inside the castle, which would provide people with water in times of war. This symbolizes the deep connection that my family and other people of the area have to the land and its history. The boat in the foreground symbolizes the importance of the Euphrates River, which flows through Al Mayadeen. The Euphrates River has been the source of many of the area's riches, such as fish and fertile soils for agriculture. Details on the boat depict me as a child and the various games and activities that were common for children at that time. The sun above the castle includes an image of my mother in the shape of a legendary bird. This shows how central my mother was to our whole family as a source of light, warmth, and a supporter of dreams. To the sides of the castle, I show flocks of sheep and other animals. To honor the occupation of my parents, who were shepherds, I proudly grew up to be a shepherd as well. It also reflects that farming was an important source of livelihood for the whole region. Prior to starting work on the paintings, Abud seemed to still struggle psychologically and emotionally from the war and refugee experiences that him and his family had to go through. This was really reflected in his artwork, which was often very dark and had a hopeless and troubled kind of feel. This particular work comes to mind for me when I think about his inner state of being at that time. It represents prisoners looking out of a broken window. Initially, you could clearly see the eyes looking through the broken shards of glass, but he kept adding more and more and more black lines until it was virtually black. This next painting shows the bridge of the city Deir Zor, which is the main city in the province where Al Mayadeen resides. This city played an important role in my transition from child to teenager. Deir Zor is well known for its suspension bridge and is a big city with a vibrant culture and rich history, located on an important trade route. When I was around 12 years old, it was my goal to visit Deir Zor in order to see the bridge and buy books and art supplies. I needed money for the bus fare and to make my purchases, and that amount was not attainable for me to get by myself. But my mother supported my youthful dream. She wanted me to expand my life and learn more of the greater area around our town. She owned chickens and sold the eggs they produced to our neighbors. From this income, she gave me the money to make my trip. That's why I have painted my mother's face within the bridge structure. My mother's handmade scarf extend to the sides of the bridge like wings to give my dreams flight. I also placed a basket of eggs on top of the bridge to show how I could afford to expand my horizon at that stage of my life. The boat shows once again the importance of the Euphrates River to the entire area. Gathered inside the boat are items to symbolize the richness of life that this river supports. This includes a piece of wood with candles on it, one for each member of my family, which are lit for good luck and blessings. 
This painting depicts how this time of my life was a positive step in my journey as an artist. Abboud had suffered from a stroke while he was a refugee in Lebanon. As a result, he still has some problems with his memory and learning a new language is very difficult for him. Communications with Abboud have therefore been an interesting mix of translation through another person or an app, some basic English or Arabic words, gestures, miming and such. Despite some of these difficulties, I found that communicating with Abboud is no problem. In fact, I found we could have very meaningful communications through sketches. I remember just prior to him starting the project, he illustrated how he felt by drawing two hands that were bound. I responded by saying, no more, and I drew an X through the bonds, followed by a bird in flight. I told him it was time to spread his wings and soar like an eagle again. These types of communications have created a really deep bond between us, and I feel a strong kinship and understanding of some deeper underlying principles and philosophies with him. Since we're also born in the same year, I often call him my Syrian brother. The third painting represents the last phase of my childhood and is based on a trip I took to Aleppo with my father when I was around 14 years old. Aleppo is the main city of another province in Syria. I wanted to show how I continued to learn and expand my mind by seeing new places, people, and way of life further and further from my hometown. When I traveled with my father, he taught me the importance of courage when faced with different conditions and situations that I was used to, and how to safely navigate unknown areas. The more I saw new places, the more my curiosity grew. I also gained an immense appreciation and respect for the toughness of many of the people that I encountered during this trip. The city of Aleppo is symbolized by the statue of the goddess of water, which is housed in the Aleppo National Museum. I chose this statue specifically to symbolize the blessings of water from the Euphrates River, and also to emphasize the long and rich cultural history of Syria. The donkey, sheep, and chickens by the goddess feet are my expression of the fond memories I have of working with my father, tending animals and having a donkey, not just for the work, but also as a friend and pet. When Abud received the grant money from Edmonton Arts Council, he was for the first time in many years really able to buy materials and supplies again for a project of such a scale. He was so excited and we had a celebration going to Delta Arts together in this large van we borrowed from a friend to buy all the supplies. This painting represents the time of my life when I was transitioning from childhood to adult. I have chosen Queen Zenobia as the central figure. She was a third century queen of the Palmyrene Empire in Syria after which the city Palmyra is named. Queen Zenobia was a cultural monarch and fostered an intellectual environment in her court. She was also tolerant towards her subjects and protected religious minorities. I traveled through Palmyra when I was about 18 or 19 years old on my way to Damascus. I was passionate about studying art and wanted to enroll at the Damascus School of Art. In this, I was disappointed. I found out a passion for art and willingness to work hard and learn were not enough. Instead, what I needed were the right connections of people with influence in order to enroll. I was shocked to find the influences of corruption and systemic inequity that flourish alongside the vibrant life, culture, and magnificent architecture of Damascus. This was a big eye-opener for a Bedouin shepherd boy from al Mayadeen. It resulted in a real loss of innocence for me. Traveling back home through Palmyra again inspired me. If a city like Palmyra could be established in the middle of a desert of sand and rocks, anything is possible. So I depict Queen Zenobia with wings to symbolize that she flew like an eagle and showed many of her accomplishments, symbols of her legend and the victory arch through which she passed when entering her city. The 
Because Abood and his family have very limited space in their house, Abood started the project at our house. When the pandemic hit, Abood became part of our household, and he lived with us while he was working on his paintings throughout most of 2020. One of the first things we learned about Abood is that his artistic process is really fueled by copious quantities of sweetened green tea. In fact, Abud has grown up drinking sweetened tea since childhood, and sometimes he would joke that his mother had already breastfed him with sweet tea as an infant. After being rejected for enrollment at the Damascus School of Art, I enrolled in Deir Zor College. I graduated as a teacher at the top of my class and took a position as an art teacher in Al Mayadeen. At the same time, I continued working as and establishing myself as an artist. I worked hard on developing my art style and my artistic ideas. I used to showcase my art in a cultural center in Damascus at that time. One year, when I was a young man of 26 or 27, Dr. Afif Bahnasi visited my annual Damascus solo exhibition. Dr. Bahnasi was an art professor and renowned art critic. He was also the UNESCO representative for Syria and was overseeing many Syrian art galleries and museums. He was very impressed with my work and provided me with contacts and recommendations, which resulted in me being invited for a solo exhibition in Paris. To receive the invitation to show my art in Paris was very exciting, but it did not include the plane ticket for me to travel to France. My father saw me in great distress and knew how passionate I was about making art. He sold 99 sheep from his own farm, bought me the plane ticket, and gave me some pocket money for the trip. This is how I was able to exhibit my art in Paris in 1992. In memory of my father's loving support, I drew him as the Eiffel Tower in his traditional shepherd clothing. The Damascus School of Art did not accept me, and yet I was showcasing in Paris. Watching Abood's work unfold has been really fascinating. He works with a complete focus and determination in a very disciplined daily pattern. Starting with his composition ideas for each canvas, he progresses to prepping the background of each work with multiple layers of colors and textures. Then he roughs in the main subject shapes and starts to slowly fill in the progressive layers of details, colors, shading and such. These multiple layers and minute application of colors and lines create a really rich, vibrant painting. When I was in my 30s, I was married and I had started a family in Al Mayadeen. Although I was working as a teacher and artist in Al Mayadeen, our resources were still very limited. I ended up accepting a teaching position in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, which would drastically increase my income. I did this in order to provide better for my family while trying to find a way to finance my dream of owning a gallery in Damascus. It was a hard decision as I went there alone without my family and therefore it meant long periods of separation from my loved ones. I lived in Riyadh for 12 years. I worked as an art teacher in a school during that time. The school motto was learn to be and I drew that logo in the upper center of the painting. Below the school logo, you see Masmak Castle, the historic castle in Riyadh. Around the castle are tents, palm trees, falcons, camels, and a coffee pot to symbolize the traditions of the area. The yellow-orange color scheme of the painting symbolizes the Arabian desert. Above the castle, I show pegasus and multiple suns, one for each of my friends who I have stayed in contact with during all the years to come. At one time, Abud was painstakingly adding multiple layers of small dots of different colors to some paintings to create a specific effect. He would be at it for hours and he could get really sore and tight around the neck and shoulders. I would just look at him and say, dot, 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 and he would look up and he would groan 
and shake his head, and then both of us would just start to laugh. In the decades that he's worked as an artist, Abud had really established his own personal style of painting, which he uses to reflect upon his own experiences and to comment on the world around him. So even though his labor-intensive process and immaculate attention to detail creates a cohesive aesthetic whole, underneath that, he's always telling a story and conveying meaning with his artwork. This painting represents the beginning of the most difficult period of my life. In 2011, I came from Saudi Arabia to Syria to spend one year with my family and to write and paint. But it was the time of the Arab Spring and conflict came to Syria. What started as an expression of discontent with the government on social media moved to demonstrations in the street demanding democratic reforms and release of political prisoners. Protest and increasingly harsh military responses escalated, leading to large-scale military attacks on towns and hundreds of civilian deaths. This turned into an all-out civil war. Syria had turned into an area of bloody battles. It had become a scarecrow, and its people had suddenly turned from real people who eat and drink and live their lives to skulls, refugees, and victims of battles. The skeletal scarecrow of war consumed everything and sowed death and destruction. The old Syrian houses had turned into rubble. Skeletons, gallows, destruction, and refugee camps abounded. People walk lost and in chaos. The Syrian bird is chained. The mother is brutally murdered. Her guts are left lying on the street. Like a crumbling brick wall, the Syrian population and landscape is broken apart and drenched in blood. This is a sad painting, and it saddens me more to explain it to people. It was difficult to watch Aboud work on the paintings about the war and his time as a refugee in Lebanon. It was obvious that his experiences and his suffering have left very deep marks on him and still impact him today. I find that it's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit that healing after such experiences is possible at all. Sometimes we just needed to get a boot out of the studio to take a break from everything. As the Syrian war progressed, many cities were destroyed or partially destroyed and many people were displaced. Syrian refugees existed both inside and outside of Syria. All of them were trying to escape the destruction devastation, and often persecution and threats from various extremist groups and government forces. This painting shows the untold number of refugees clamoring to escape death and destruction. The Red Sea symbolizes the pain, suffering, and destruction of war, which people try to flee in the boat. The boat is depicted with a large bird-shaped sail to symbolize hope for the future and peace. Surrounding the boat and hope for escape is barbed wire, indicating the many measures and obstacles that face people who are displaced and fleeing from violence of war. In the spring of 2015, we had a conversation about Syrian refugees. We couldn't understand why there weren't more coming to Canada, because there was the promise that 10,000 would come, only 1,700 or so came at the time. And we decided we had to do something about it. Refugee Response is the name of the organization that we formed with dual purposes of sponsoring refugees and providing humanitarian aid to refugees who had left Syria and were in the neighboring countries. We do this under the umbrella of the Mennonite Central Committee. Whenever I would walk into a boot studio, 
I would never know what I may find. He could be in tears as he was remembering difficult times or his deceased parents or other family members or friends. Or he could be laughing and rejoicing in happy memories. At times, we'd blast the music on the stereo and have a mini party, dancing and laughing. And sometimes, Abud would play a particular song on repeat for hours as he worked. Abud is very intensely focused and emotional and very much living in the moment. And I feel that that is expressed in his artwork. Because some of my artwork was seen as critical of authorities or to the beliefs of extremist groups, I received many personal threats as the Syrian conflict escalated. I had to leave Syria and managed to go to Lebanon ahead of my family. I did not realize at the time that this would result in me being stranded in Lebanon for six years, unable to return to my family in Syria while they weren't able to join me too. This forced separation from my family, my worry for them, and the conditions and hardships that I faced as a refugee in Lebanon made this period of extreme suffering for me. I have depicted these years as a Phoenician boat with a sail mast from each year that I spent in this situation. There are over 84 million people who are displaced or have become refugees at this point. I, I mean, the numbers will overwhelm you. And so I think unless you feel that you have some agency to offer some small bit, then I think it's too hard to live. Throughout the year of watching his series of paintings take shape, I was also observing a second transformation. Creating the series of paintings which chronicle key points in his life was like a healing journey for Boot. As an artist, being able to have resources to create at this scale again was really liberating for him. But more than that, the themes of the painting seemed to act as a way for him to come to terms with the upheavals in his life. I have titled this painting, Amina. This is in recognition of my sister-in-law, who was instrumental to arrange for my family and I to come to Canada. In addition, the Arabic word Amina means feeling secure, safe, peaceful, as well as trustworthiness, and this is what Canada means to us. This painting shows the magic carpet that carried my family and I to this new land and home. The sun and large flying eagle symbolize our flight to freedom and security, and the hopes and dreams for the future that we carried in our hearts. We were blessed with many people helping us. The Edmonton nonprofit Refugee Response Collective helped to secure the visa for our family and supported us to navigate in this new country and to rebuild our lives. I have recognized and honored some of the key persons who helped us during this time. In the circles at the bottom, I have written their names in Arabic. Amina, Marianne, and Kim, Donna, Brenda, Jan, and Sarah. Words cannot express our thanks and gratitude for your kindness and help. I have also written, Welcome to Canada in Arabic, since we did feel welcomed and very supported. Abud especially loved working on his three paintings that showed his experiences and reflections about Canada. He is immensely interested in all aspects of Canada, and his curiosity and interest in other people really motivates him to continue to learn about his new home and all of the cultures that reside here.
As my family and I settled in Canada, we met many new people and formed some very close friendship. This includes our friend Connie, Bob, Alex, and Sean. I call Connie my Canadian sister and show her as the Inukshuk in the painting, while the others have their names shown in the various Inukshuk stones. The canoe shows me and my family on our journey, while the Inukshuk is depicted as a traditional marker to guide the traveler's way. The Canadian flags held by the Inukshuk are like the lights that the person at the airport used to direct our plane to the ramp. At the base of the Inukshuk, I also recognize and give thanks to the Edmonton Arts Council, which provided me with a grant that enabled me to create this project. The vibrant colors used show my renewed happiness and confidence for the future. It was heartwarming to watch a boot leaving behind more and more of his troubles from his war experiences as he progressed through his project. It was as though I could watch him blossom into a productive, happy person once again. Someone who started to feel hope and optimism for the future. I dedicated the final painting of this journey for my wife, Suad. Suad's face is shown at the top of the painting as part of the eagle that spreads its wing over my world and oversees everything. Suad is truly the matriarch of our family and has been the central anchor throughout the years of suffering and now in creating our new life in Canada. I also show some parts of Canada's landscape and indigenous cultures in this painting. I feel a strong love and kinship for the land, as well as the culture and traditions of Canada's indigenous peoples, which reminds me of many aspects of my own Bedouin upbringing. The colors show the vitality, life and growth that I have observed in the Canadian landscape. With my art, I want to share my culture background and experiences. At the same time, I also want to learn about Canada as my new home and listen to the stories of its people so that we can understand each other to build a future together. Having Abood live with our family for much of 2020 to work on these paintings has been an immensely positive experience for all of us. Our families continue to be very close and it reinforces to me that we're all more similar then we're different in our basic human natures and experiences. We may express ourselves in different ways, but ultimately, most differences are superficial, and underneath, we're all one. So, Abud, my friend, may you continue to soar like an eagle. <laughs>